Hey guys, Jordan Dubano here from the Sales Warrior. Uh, today I'm going to be on the online prosperity show with Prosper. Super excited about it. And we're going to be talking about how you can double your business by making sales on the phone. Looking forward to it. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the sales trainer himself, Jordan DeBerner. Jordan, how are you doing, my man? I'm good, Prosper. How are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks for your time on the show today. Now, viewers, if you're watching this show right now, you'd understand that our mission is to help your business be profitable and enjoyable. And if you would understand how that all happens, um, you need to sell something to an audience that's willing and able to actually buy it off of you. Now, we've brought to you Jordan here, who is an award-winning um, sales speaker, and also he got an award for being amongst the 30 under 30 here in Australia. And he actually helps consultants and coaches who want to grow their coaching business. And he will actually help you um, attract qualified prospects and enroll higher paying clients and actually deliver powerful um, coaching so that you can actually focus on the thing that you are amazing at, which is helping people get results. Now, Jordan, obviously you've spoken to elite people like John Martini and the rest that I won't mention right now on this blog. Thank you so much for awarding us your time um, on this episode here today. Tell us a little bit about how you sort of got started and you know, what got you um, motivated to be the person you are today? Yeah, well, first off, uh, thank you for having me on the show, Prosper. Um, my journey in sales, it, it's kind of a funny one. I, I've always been fascinated with influencing people. And I think that comes from the part of my life when I had a stutter for quite a long time. I, it took me about two to three minutes to get one sentence out. I uh, was always really nervous communicating to people. And I think, you know, I'm a firm believer that whatever we are challenged with most eventually want to master that. And I think because speech was so tough for me and I just couldn't get my point across, I've always had this drive to master it. So that's where I think it comes from. Um, my journey in sales, I believe it started all the way back when I was 16, when I started my first ever coaching business. Uh, it was training little kids uh, to play soccer. That was my first exposure to it. So I remember, you know, going around to schools, knocking on doors, um, trying to get a meeting with the principal, and having receptionists say, no, nah, go away, we don't want to, you know, we don't have the time for you and what have you. So that was really where it all started out for me. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's two things that um, if anybody would have been given an opportunity, they would have just crawled in their shell and said, I'm never going to be any better at speaking. So there's no way I'm going to be in front of people. No. Did you have any help to go past this, um, you know, stage of your life where you couldn't, um, you know, speak, you know, fluently or without a starter? Yeah. Uh, so I'll answer that with two stories. The first one was I truly believed when I was, I got an opportunity to coach kids when I was around 12 years old. And I was just volunteering at this time. This was before I started the paying business. And I don't know what it was, Prosper, but one night, the, this kid's dad who was coaching, you know, my brother's basketball team, he was late and he was the head coach and he didn't show up. He was late and people were looking for coaches and no one was around. So I'm, there I am, 12 years old, all these five-year-olds running around everywhere, uh, you know, out of control and Parents are looking at me going, Jordan, will you coach him? And I'm going, I can't, like, I've got so much anxiety speaking up. How am I going to coach all these kids? And it was interesting. I, when I got up and I stood in front of these young kids, something just came over me and I knew what to say. Uh, I knew how to communicate and how to get their attention. And I think it was because I saw all these young kids having the same challenges that I had when I was a kid. You know, a lot of kids that play basketball, uh, their confidence and their ability to, you know, put themselves out there, usually at that age is quite low. So for me, it's almost like I related to them in, the, in this weird way. So 
that was the first time that I kind of owned my space. The second moment was in my first sales role. I remember I had two months where I'd missed target sitting in my manager's office and he said, Jordan, in your third month, if you don't hit target, you're on a plane back to Melbourne and you're done. Like, well, we can't keep you. Now, Prosper, my target was 100K in a month. So it's a lot of money. And, uh, you know, for me, the highest I'd gotten up to that point was around 50K. So I was stressed. And I remember in the office feeling so scared that I wasn't going to be able to hit the target. And I caught myself and I heard... I, it, for some reason it resonated and I thought I haven't sold myself on me. That's why I'm struggling. I'm not sold on who I am. When I get on the phone or when I'm in this interaction with my manager, I'm not sold on how confident I am or how good I am. So it's going to be impossible to make target with that barrier in the way. So that, that would be the two, the two moments where I really created the shift. Uh, after that, I remember doing all this personal development to really push forward. Absolutely. That's a lot of um, self belief in, in yeah. as much as you being put right at the deep end to coach your peers uh, at that basketball uh, game. And also the stress that you were being given by your then boss to actually perform mm -hmm. Um, you yeah. know, on the last minute and you brought it, you found it in and of yourself to deliver the goods and everything else. Now, do you think that self push and self sort of motivation is crucial, um, you know, in your line of work or the people that you actually coach that if they're not moved in and of themselves, whatever influences may come from outside might mm. not move the needle in their success? Well, yeah, it's everything. I mean, I always say to my clients, there's two objections in every sales call and it controls whether money is transferred or where money stays in an account. It's our own objections. Can I make the sale? Are they going to say no? How am I going to cope with it? Like it, that conversation's going on in our minds and it's their objections. Can I afford it? Do I need to think about it? Do I need to speak to my partner? Now, first, it's our job to control our own objections and go, I'm not going to let it get the better of me. And then second, it's to, you know, eliminate whatever's going on in the prospect's mind before it impacts the sale. You know, one metaphor I like to say, Prosper, is when we go to an airport, you know, before you board a plane, everyone has to go through security. Now, why do we have to go through security? Well, we have to go because... People want to know if we're carrying anything dangerous. So we're not allowed on that plane before, you know, without being checked. Our sales calls have to be the same. We should not be speaking to people that already have objections. Like we're, we're throwing programs, offers, and people already, they're already armed. They're already armed with all these objections. So I say, look, before you even think about showing them a program, before you even think about showing them an offer, take them through the security detector, get them to dump their objections down and then you can start selling. So it's a, yeah, there's, you've got to handle those two objections first. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people don't realize they have a problem until somebody has eloquently explained it to them yes. um, so that they can actually understand they have this problem. You could go around with cancer in your body for three years up until you given that diagnosis. Um, I mean, sorry, I know cancer is a heavy word, but you could go around with some sort of ailment yeah until you're given the diagnostics by a doctor or somebody of a coach uh, position or a mentor, you wouldn't know you had that problem um, going on inside of you. So the people that come to you, can you give us a typical position of where they are right now, you know, so that they can actually understand, wait a minute, Jordan is actually talking to me. I'm facing yeah. these things because some people don't realize they're having a problem up until somebody notices it and points it out to them. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. I get one particular person and it's, I've seen it across the board. It's, um, it's someone that's scared to pick up the phone and they're probably sitting at home in their study, looking at their laptop, doing video editing, doing the books, doing all the admin stuff. And what they don't realize they're doing it to avoid picking up the phone. Now, again, we've all done it. Sometimes you're laughing, bro. Like it, it is so common. Sometimes I do it and I know I need to do some work then. I, need, I know I need to fix this. 
Um, so it's that person that's not doing the work on the phone. It's also the person that says, my leads are wrong. I'm, you know, I don't have qualified leads. Uh, you know, there's, I'm not making enough money because of Facebook. Like it's that person that thinks their marketing's not doing the work. Now I'm a big believer in marketing, but I always say to people, do not invest thousands and thousands of dollars in marketing until you've got a close rate of over 40%. Otherwise you're wasting your time. So it's that person that is avoiding it. And second, they're not facing the reality that their close rate is quite low. Absolutely. A lot of people, um, you would have caught me laughing, laughing a, le- a little bit earlier on. Um, we caught up in the whole busyness of, oh, my day has gone by. I've done this, 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 but none of yeah. those things have gotten you closer to the bank at all. Mm-hmm. So we all know that. But when the time comes in to start paying our bills, trust me, I've gone to Commonwealth Bank with hugs and showing them my likes on Facebook. They don't take those. So that's <laughs> one of those things that a lot of people need to. <laughs> I heard that you just sparked a, a memory. Um, I saw Frank Kern do this really funny post. Someone posted on his Facebook page saying, oh, Frank, you talk about, you know, Facebook and marketing, but dude, you only have like 100,000 followers, which is, you know, it's quite a lot, but it's not heaps in compared to, you know, your Tony Robbins and stuff. And Frank Kern just replies back with a one-liner and I love it. He goes, oh, you know, hey, it's a funny thing, dude. Last time I checked, the bank couldn't deposit followers. <laughs> and everyone in the comments is just having a go at this one guy. And it, it, it is literally so true. Absolutely. I mean, we do get caught up in, you know, the vanity metrics of, oh, I've got these many Snapchat followers. And we forget the essence of what exactly we're doing, why we're doing it and who we need to be doing it for. So I think exactly like what Jordan is saying, it is paramount to keep a few things in check. And also um, he's got a course coming up or a program that comes up, you know, um, with regards to uh, objection handling. And um, I figured out in, in, in our businesses, one of the barriers to actually achieving financial success, um, whether be it personal or business is our attitude uh, towards money. Like you are saying there that you get caught up in not wanting to ring, not wanting to annoy people with your offers, but mm. it's in the reaching out that you get money. So what, what, what do you think is, um, uh, or do you think having, you know, you know, some sort of uh, money problems or money issues in your own you know, hindsight, are they the ones that are probably costing people um, getting the sales that they actually want in their business? Yes, I think people that have issues with money coming in, there's two things going on and one of them I solve. It's either a sales thing or it's either a marketing thing. So marketing feeds you the leads to so you can breathe and sales, you get to eat. Right. So I always say to people, like, if you if you don't have the leads and you're not getting enough of them, then you've you got to do something about it. Uh, if you're getting the leads, but you're not making the sales, then we've got to we've got to look at what exactly you're doing. So it does come down to those two elements. But then I'd also say there's an overarching thing that really encompasses all of them. And I see this so much. You've got to believe in what you do. Like <laughs> people love people love what they do, but they don't believe in it. Which, which baffles me, but they love to be a coach. They love to be a network marketer. They love to, you know, uh, start up some sort of app, but they don't believe in it. And it's a big reality check because here's the one question you have to ask yourself to see if you really believe in it. You could love the stuff because you've dreamed about it your whole life, but when you believe in something, you would buy it yourself. I've got no shame in saying, Prosper, I would go and see myself speak. I had to ask myself that question. Would I see me speak? Yes, I would. Great. So I'm even more confident now in selling seminar tickets. Would I sit in a one-on-one consult with myself? I would. I know what I do. It's great. Okay, good. Then I feel even more confident selling it. Would I download some of my league magnets that I put out? To be honest, a couple of weeks ago, I said, hell no, these are horrible, right? So I took them off Facebook and I made it even better. 
Um, you know, so those are the questions that I ask myself quite regularly. Would I buy my own stuff? And if I say yes, I believe it. If I say no, then it's, it ain't going out there. So that's a big thing people have to face. If they're not making money, it's probably because they don't believe in what they do. Hmm. That's a really good one. Then why buy the tickets and not go and watch the show? Sorry? I mean, as in, why would people go through all of this, buying the yeah. tickets and not go and see the show? <laughs> not going to see the show? Yeah, 100%. Like, and it's, it's a big reality, and particularly in our space, Prosper, where people are becoming experts and they want to go and push their message. I think it's fantastic, but they really have to ask themselves that question if they're not making sales or, you know, getting the, getting the leads that they want. Um, obviously, Jordan, there's quite a lot that needs to be, you know, un unraveled and we can't do that in a space of 25 minutes. If somebody's watching this show right now, and um, they feel like, you know, they could learn a bit of, a bit of um, you know, sales strategy and also objection handling from you. Um, what's the best way that they can uh, get a hold of you? So they can go to www.jordandebarno.com. And uh, I'd say the best place to start is to go and download the objection advantage. Uh, the objection advantage is an objection handling system that I... I'm claiming this and you can send it back to me if you do not like it. I'm claiming it that it'll lift your close rate up to 75% uh, because what it does, it takes, it actually gets you to stop objection handling and start eliminating objections. So like I said before, we put the security detector in front of your sales process. You eliminate the objections before you sell anything and you watch prospects will just flow through and they will be a lot more, are receptive to buying your stuff. So that's where I would start if, I, if anyone's interested. Absolutely. Now, Jordan, you would also, you know, looking at the time, um, we've just started a new month, which is the third month of 2018. For those people yeah. that would have started a business or that would have had New Year's resolutions, if they wrote them on their wall, the paint is only just getting dry right now. So what sort of stuff can you... Um, you know, add to their resolutions or help them, you know, go through, you know, so that they can actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. In 2018. Yeah, it's a great question. I think the first thing I'll give you three things, Prosper. I think the first thing's really important. Set goals that are realistic. Like if you've said in 2018, I'm going to, you know, and we've all done it before. We've set unrealistic goals. Uh, if I'm going to build a million dollar business and you don't know the steps to build the million dollar business yet, or you haven't built a 500k business, then maybe dial it back a bit and do what you know. Start there, build the confidence, and then take the steps to that bigger goal. The second thing I would say is sell something every day. Every day, have marketing, have, have sales happening. And don't, like, a lot of people are promoting, you know, one, one traffic source, one this, one that, and that's great when it works. But when you're trying to find out what works, you need to be doing, a, you know, a couple channels to bring in the lead so you can sell. So first off, guys, don't just have one thing that you're doing and crossing your fingers that it's going to work. I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, at the start of this year, I kind of did that. And I saw, you know what, this isn't working, that's not working. I'm going to add a few more channels to see what will work. So... If you need to get on email, get on email. If you need a cold call, get on cold call. It's not dead. Don't listen to people that say it's dead. And uh, three, invest in Facebook. I think that's a massive opportunity. Uh, and the last thing I'll say is don't back away from your calls because that's where the money's at. Pick up the phone, call your leads. That's, that's how you're going to get the business you want. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And clearly, um, like I said earlier on, you know, Jordan is here to help those consultants and coaches who really want to grow um, their coaching business. And he's um, obviously from what you've heard can help you actually attract the qualified prospects and actually enroll higher paying clients. And you can actually start being doing and having a business that is actually profitable and enjoyable. Now, Jordan, I can't thank you enough for your time and your value that you've brought to this show today. Um, you know, you could have been doing anything else on a Friday like this, but thank you so much for your time today. No worries, Prosper. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.